Oh, wow. What? Oh, my goodness. This is crazy. That's incredible. And it's so in my ear. Like, that is it's so close. I was almost going to go, am I wearing headphones? <laughs> like, really expensive on-ear headphones, you know? It's kind of scary. Whoa. The only way I could describe this is as if you step behind the speaker, a normal speaker, into the workings of the speaker, and you're like standing in the sound before it leaves the speaker. You've done very well. I love it. <laughs> it feels like dark magic, you know? <laughs> sure. Marcos. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you here at uh, Pioneer uh, Studio in St Albans. Um, thank you so much for coming down. How are you? What have you been up to recently? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, my pleasure, our pleasure to be here. Yeah, and I've been just quite busy with, with all you've seen it with the company, really going here and there and seeing people trying to push the technology forward. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to having a chat with you about audio scenic today and the journey so far and mm -hmm. you know where you're looking to kind of take this technology and the company next. Um, so I was hoping we could start right at the beginning if that's okay. Can you tell us a little bit about how audio scenic first came about, how you kind of happened upon this technology and essentially what the you know what the kind of foundations of the company are? Mm -hmm. yeah, with pleasure. So um, audio scenic uh, comes the idea around 2015-2016. I was working in a, a research project that was uh, funded by EPSRC and was a collaboration between um, University of Salford, University of Surrey, University of Southampton and BBC R&D. And this research project was called S3A and what we wanted to do there is to bring a spatial audio into people's houses. Okay, And spatial audio back then was basically surround speakers for speakers all around us, and it was something that was um, very hard to put into people's houses, you know. And back then in the university, I was working with an academic called Filippo Fazzi, which is um, my co-founder, and we were saying, okay, can we really create something that will allow people to consume spatial audio, but in a practical manner? And in the university, there had been lots of research about this technology called crustal cancellation, that just with speakers in front of you would allow you to hear full binaural audio, okay? We were researching into that and we said that, okay, this technology has a, has a problem, which is that it has a very fixed sweet spot, so it's not practical. And then uh, Filippo and I came with the idea of really putting a camera and making the sweet spot of this technology, crystal cancellation, user adaptive. And this is what we came with. And it was around 2016 and then we were saying, oh, um, this technology that we have created is very cool, but uh, it shouldn't stay as a journal paper. You know, yeah. and then I got very much involved into really we need to take out of this university, and that was the start of getting audio scenic, uh, the beginning of getting it out of the university and creating yeah. a company. Uh, how, talk us a little bit through the process of how you have been able to achieve this. Yeah, so that that was uh, very interesting, and it's basically with with a lot of work and, and a lot of help. You know. In 2019, uh, I met a person who is our CEO, uh, he's called uh, David Montez, and basically um, he helped me like um, doing a pitch, getting money from investors, and then with this money from investors, um, basically get a small team that uh, in which we started basically developing and putting the software that we have developed in the university in an actual, in an actual productized way. And I was lucky because um, back then I, I, I got some people that they are still in the company and that they were basically excellent engineers that have really made this possible. And we started developing the code, we started going to trade shows, we got in touch with a manufacturer that allowed us to do our first prototype. And you know, that was very, very funny because that was like the COVID years. You couldn't travel, you know, you couldn't basically show this thing to people, but I uh, think with a bit of luck, we were able to first put um, a demo in front of in front of Razer, you know, yeah. was okay. it 2000, 2021, and this is how this product came, you know, yeah. to life, basically. I was wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about the hardware partnerships mm -hmm. that you've secured with this so far, because obviously it's a, it's a software that needs to be incorporated within a, a physical product. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Talk to us about that process, who you've spoken to, how you uh, would like to kind of roll that aspect mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. of, of this product out. 
Yeah, certainly. So, so our partnerships for us are, are very important, basically, because uh, in the end, our product is software that we license to basically to OEM, to brands like, for example, Razer, that was our first customer, and now Acer, you know. Okay. And they have been really important in basically bringing this technology to market. So Razer, our first product that uh, basically worked with us, in which uh, we met them. We also met parallelly THX and the brand THX Special Audio helped us really on supporting us on really taking this technology forward and making this a pioneer product. And they were mm. very important because as a small company that has limited resources as Audio Scenic, really getting the right hardware partner is very important. And Razer, which is a brand that basically um, likes to have innovative products, you know, so this informing technology and wanted to create a soundbar, you know. Yes. And back then, like the, coming back to the, to the question you said before, um, they wanted a technology like that and they were evaluating us um, uh, at the same time as other technologies, you know? Yeah. And, and it was COVID. So Razer is in Singapore, we couldn't travel to Singapore to do a demo. So the, the soundbar was done by the, the manufacturer yeah. through the, a person that is the representant of the chip that powers the soundbar. Right, okay. So from one person to the other person, the other person went to Singapore because he was based in Singapore yeah. and could demo technology to Razer. So it was a bit of yeah. luck, like, okay, a, yeah. like a miracle, you know? <laughs> but it happened. That's and, incredible. And then they, they liked what they heard, they believed on us and they took a yeah. forward, you know? So, so on our job, really, we basically are constantly seeking to, to engage with, with our partners and to show them how they can create product based on our technology that can be innovative that can really uh, give something extra to the consumers. Yeah. Uh, you... I mean, is there any limit as to where you can place this technology? Because at the moment, you know, we're, we're here talking about soundbar. Do you see a point where you can put this into laptops, iPads, phones even? Is this something that you've thought about or that you kind of have, uh, you know, ideas and designs for perhaps a little bit further down the line? Or maybe even you're already looking at them right now. But I just wondered about yeah, what the what the future might hold for the, the types of physical products you can you can put this technology into? Yeah, certainly. So the technology uh, to work, it needs uh, just two loud speakers, you know, okay. and then basically that allows to put the technology in many many places, you know. Yeah. So for example, laptops is an is a use case where we are currently looking and we are currently um, working with basically laptop makers to take the technology to the market. And and I think next year there will be some some laptops with audio cinema fit technology. So yeah. this is this is um, a great use case, but uh, in the in the end anything anything that has two speakers, like a mobile phone, you know, handheld console, a tablet, you know, can use this technology and can improve the current state of the art of of how yeah. how this reproduces audio and we can make audio more spatial. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing you know where it goes next. I think it already is quite a remarkable product, and I think the scope for where it could go over the coming months and years is is, um, is really quite exciting. Uh, so thank you so much for coming and taking the time to chat to us and talk us through it and, and explain how this has all come together and, and where you're looking to take it in the future. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you for, for receiving us here. Oh, you're uh, welcome. Thank really you. Really enjoyed. I've just listened to the Razer Soundbar with Audio Scenic Technology and I must say it's probably one of the coolest experiences ever. It's a whole new dimension to the way I've heard music before. You can kind of step beyond the initial picture of the music, like I was saying. You can step beyond the initial picture of the music. You almost feel like you're inside where the music's coming from. I feel like being in like the most high-end cinema in London or something, like almost like having speakers in the chairs kind of thing. Especially the dinosaur one, I was tempted to like run for the hills, I was quite... <laughs>